Welcome everyone, my name is Allie. For those who don't know me, I am a fantasy artist and tarot card reader. And up to this point, most of my videos on YouTube have been all about tarot. So I thought, hmm, maybe it's time I create a video where I share some of my artwork because maybe some of you aren't familiar with what I do. So I create fairies and fantasy. And if we go all the way back seven years ago when I first started painting fairies and mermaids and things, um, this was the book that started it all. This is Jessica Galbraith's artist manual. Now Jessica Galbraith was a fairy and fantasy artist as well. She has since retired from that genre of artwork, but before she did, she created this um, manual for artists who want to paint fantasy and get and start a business. And so this is what started my little art business. Now in Jessica's book, she recommends that you don't start your business until you have at least 12 images in your portfolio. And I, well, I was a bit of an eager beaver and I jumped the gun and I started merchandising and selling my artwork at fairs when I only had five pieces completed, if you can believe that. Only five and I started a business with five paintings. So looking back, um, I'm not sure if I would have done it differently. It would have been nice to have more, but I did it. I did it with five and I've been building it up and gaining more and more products and more and more um, fans ever since. One of the things she talks about in the very beginning is she said, number one, first thing you need to do is create 12 or more pieces of artwork that are a theme. So I thought long and hard about what kind of theme I wanted to create and I thought, you know, I kind of thought maybe do a zodiac because there was 12 or maybe um, some gemstones. But I thought, nah, that's all been done before. So instead of zodiacs and gemstones, I chose bugs. I chose creepy crawly things and I was going to turn them into fairy archetypes. That's what I came up with. So let me introduce you to what I call my enchanted insects. So first one, this is the butterfly beauty. So with butterflies, I thought, well, they are definitely the most beautiful, the most attractive of all of the bugs and creepy crawly things out there. So for her, this one, I just wanted someone who's very model-like, someone who is beautiful, who kind of emphasizes that really feminine, soft beauty. And so I incorporated a lot of um, like pink, the echinacea and the bleeding hearts. So I thought this was a very kind of springtime image. And so this is my butterfly beauty piece. Next, I did something a little bit more bold with the red. Um, I did a ladybug. I call her the ladybug gardener because I thought when I think of ladybugs, I think of those little garden helpers who eat all the aphids and you know they save gardens like farmers buy them for their crops just to keep their crops healthy so I called her the gardener so here she is tending to her rose garden um, with her little ladybug companions there in the background and when I was designing her I had like this vision of like the big the big ladybug shell the kind of iconic red with the black dot shell and I thought oh I'll do a ball, ball kind of a ball gown dress and so that's how I came up with the concept for her and then kept with the kind of red and white theme or the red and black yeah she was the third piece that I created I actually did an earlier one in the butterfly I did uh, like a bum not a bee a honeybee um, but I've since retired that one because it was my very very first one and I'm just I look back and my skills have improved quite a bit since then, so that one's been retired, although you can still purchase it in like small form, like little magnets or um, the artist trading cards, you can still buy her, the, the bee. So you can find that on my website at alisonsbooks.ca. Uh, yeah, and this one too, so when I came out with the, the ball, like she was originally going to be the only one in this kind of ball gown um, dress but she quickly became one of my best sellers and people love the big poofy dresses and I really enjoyed painting them so you can see with my later pieces there's a lot of big poofy frilly dresses in my fairy artwork so that that happened by accident that was never intentional that just kind of happened and I also did a dragonfly so here's my dragonfly fairy 
Um, all of the dragonflies in this image are based on real dragonflies. Uh, for her, I wanted her to be a little bit um, cheeky, graceful. I wanted her to be in a very slender outfit because of the long, skinny body of a dragonfly. Um, and I wanted the wings outstretched. Like I wanted her to look like she was dancing above the pond. So I called her um, the dancer because dragonflies have this incredible a flight ability where they can hover, they can go backwards, they can go forwards, like so that's why I thought of the dancer when I thought of um, dragonflies because of their agility and their incredible ability to move and dance in the air. So my dragonfly dancer. The next piece I did were some garden snails. And for this one, I had it, when I thought of the snail, I had envisioned you know, being in a garden, but it being very, very peaceful and tranquil because I think of snails and I think like it's not fast paced, it's not busy, it's very slow and it's very deliberate. And I just thought snails have a long time to think about things, they don't rush in. Um, so that's what I wanted. Oh, there goes my dryer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so snails, they don't rush in, they take their time, so that's what I wanted to um, emphasize in this piece, is a character or an archetype who thought things through, who took their time, who put a lot of thought into things, who thought about things from all angles, so a lot of introspection, and just a very kind of peaceful image to de-emphasize kind of like the busyness or the busy world or the stress. I just wanted to take that away and create this character. So I called her the muse and it's kind of a play on words because um, I didn't know what to name this piece at first. So I went to Facebook and I said, hey guys, I finished this piece but I don't know what to call it. Um, it needs to be an archetype and then somebody said it looks like she's musing and so I was like yeah she is musing and she's also a muse she was an inspiration for this piece so I have called her the muse and my last insect that I've done to date I have always wanted to make more of it I swear I come up with ideas way faster than I can paint them so I have a list of more bugs that I want to do it's just finding the time to create them. I'm so slow at creating my artwork. It takes me an average of 60 hours to do each of these pieces. But here is my spider. There was no way I could do a series of bugs and insects without including a spider. So for her, I wanted her to be a little bit dark, a little bit scary, because we kind of associate spiders with fear and kind of like, so I gave her this kind of Halloween ambience going on here. Um, with the kind of like the widow or the uh, Frankenstein's wife kind of hairdo um, and a lot you know the fall leaves and with the tarantula colors um, I also included some black widows there's a black widow here this one down here is actually a false black widow it's not a real black widow because you can see the red is on the top rather than on the belly the underside of the abdomen so, but she's a black widow, she has the red on her belly, so mm, warning, danger. And then with the flowers, I was really careful to choose flowers in the background that were associated with, you know, scary things. Or Like, I was looking for black flowers, like real life black flowers. So these are all based on real flowers, the, the black lilies. And then this one right here is a really exotic, it must be some kind of orchid, but it's called a bat flower. So when I saw the name bat flower and just the weird, with like the weird tendrils that come down, the funny little like tentacle like petals that fall from it, I was like, oh man, that is the flower. So that is a real flower, it's called a bat flower. And I just thought it was the perfect flower um, to include in my spider fairy. Now this archetype I called the weaver uh, one because uh, spiders weave webs but also because i wanted her to be a little bit like a little bit frightening and intimidating and in that she is a powerful force to be reckoned with she is like a weaver of fate she's in control of things so that's how i that's why i called her the weaver all right, so that those are my enchanted insects. I've created six 
to date. Um, I just shared five. Like I said, the B has been retired. Maybe I should remake it, but I kind of want to focus on doing new things rather than redoing old things. Maybe when I retire and I have more time on my hands. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, if you like what you saw, um, all of these pieces are available on, as art prints as well as I put them on merchandise. You can get them on tote bags, notebooks, bookmarks, um, magnets I've mentioned, um, a lot of different products. Check out my website, allisonspokes.ca. Go to the art site and you can see all of my products and merchandise. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching. Until next time, stay shiny and keep sparkling. Bye.